One, two, action. What is up guys? Fahan here with Zawas again and today we have Lex. How are you Lex? Very good. Thank you so much man for you know coming out yeah. and sharing your experience with the Honda Varadero 125R. I mean this yeah. bike is uh, been in our list to review for quite some time. Yeah, right? quite true. La. Thank you Lex for coming forward uh, with your the Varadero. I have to say this bike is actually a beautiful bike. Very for, beautiful. At its time, this bike is a really beautiful bike. It's beefy, it has that muscular look. Uh, unfortunately, the engine the is not muscular. The engine, engine size is <laughs> smaller. Yep, yeah, very so we, small. Yeah. Okay. So before Lex tell us the story about his bike, I'm gonna give a bit of background about it, huh? With a 15-year production run starting from 2001. The Honda XL 125V Varadero was released in the UK targeting beginner riders. Borrowing design elements from the XL 1000V Varadero, the 125 offered substantially bigger proportions than most 125cc motorcycles at the time. Its 124cc 4-stroke SOHC 90-degree V-twin is adapted from the VT125C Shadow Cruiser. Initially a carburetor fuel system, it was updated to fuel injection in 2007 to meet Euro 3 emission standards. It uses a 5-speed manual transmission. While in Singapore, the Varadero is overlooked and faded into obscurity, its popularity in Europe had earned the Varadero 125 a legendary status with a cult-like following, popular among enthusiasts. Alright, so as you say, Zah, uh, this bike very big, engine small. <laughs> but I have to say, uh, first impressions wise, uh, it looks like a class 2 A. Yeah. yeah. Or class 2 Even comparable mm. to the 4 X. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Me. Even if if you look at the engine, mm. it looks like a 2 A. Yeah, 2 A. Yes. Like, it's a V twin. Uh. Mm. V twin. Well, on the 125cc. Uh. I think this is the only bike so uh. far that I know has a V twin engine. <laughs> yeah, it's all 2 B. Every other 2 uh, B bike. In the market, it's like a single uh, cylinder. There's one, the Daylim Daystar. Oh, Daylim Daystar. Ah, yes. Daylim Daystar. ah yes. yes. That one is correct. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. a between. Yeah. Right. You reminded me of so the Daylim Daystar. Mm. So for yourself, Lex, why the Varadero 125? Oh. Well, the Var when I considered buying a bike, I took a look at a few things. Mm -hmm. Primarily, fuel consumption. And also, the most important to me is the uh, the position that you're riding, the riding position. Mm. So most of the 125s that we know are uh, very uh, crouched down, they're quite small because of their frame. Mm, I needed right. something a bit bigger, giving me a better view of the road. So I couldn't find these bikes through my entire class 2, 2B, 2A, mm -hmm. and well, with the exception of the, you know, the sports tourers. So what if there was a sports tourer for class 2B? Cla mm. So I looked at the sports tourer from class 2B, there's the 190X. Recently, I would have bought that, the 200X. And then suddenly this bike, suddenly popped out on the carousel. When it came out, it was on the market for four months, five months. I waited quite long. Then I was riding a scooter at that time. Mm -hmm. And I really uh, didn't like the scooter experience. Well, it's half bad on my part because I bought a European scooter. A lot of problems what and everything. What scooter is that? Just curious. It's the Piaggio X10. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, oh, so. It's also another legend though, but then, yeah. It's a very big bike, it looks like a jet ski on the road. I was going for that feeling. I like fat looking bikes. Mm -hmm. and a bit sporty and tall. So these are, what well, rides up in the, my alley is the sports stores and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So my, sad to say, uh, this Vardero is got about nine months left. Oh, man. Hopefully the COE is going to go low. I can keep it as a side bike to ride. Mm -hmm. Then I'll move on to the other sports stores in the range like the 400X or the 750. Nice. Well, when I saw it, why I must have it is because first of all, the price, it was $2,000. $2,000 two years ago. <laughs> What's there to think about? Let's go to, go to the bike shop. Look at it, it runs. Okay, good, that's the criteria. I did most maintenance uh, for the bike already. It added up the cost, partially because the parts were quite expensive. Because this bike is a European bike. You won't find many in Singapore. You will find a lot in Europe, especially in the UK, because their first riding class is up to one to five, and this is in the highest demand in the UK. Ah. To the extent where there's a great number of OEM parts, and I bought most of the parts that uh, in my maintenance I bought from UK through Wemoto. It's quite competitive. 
even with the uh, long delivery timing. So there is still a chance to maintain this bike and the availability of parts. That's a good thing to know that this bike is still available in the European market, considering that most of the bike uh, during its time is already like obsolete. Yes. Having said that, uh, this bike is still uh, being used, still in demand in the European market, just gives assurance that don't worry about getting parts. Uh, for an old bike. Uh. Yeah, that's one of the main issues with an old bike. And also, I could just buy a new engine and just slap it in instead of doing an old bike. The UK, their, their idea of high mileage is 34,000 miles, which is like 70, 80. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, probably an aggregation. Mm -hmm. But uh, for us, this guy, before I changed my meter, my meter died like a few months ago. Very sad, very expensive. It was about 150K. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So it has been overhauled before, so I really don't know how to aga the, the when do I do my mm -hmm. valve clearances and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it, when you switch it on, it runs perfectly fine. So that's all I actually uh, matters to me in, in this bike. It, it drinks about 27 kilometers a liter. Mm -hmm. It's 17.5 liter tank, gives me a range of about 400 safe. Wow. With one tank. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So. And to think that yours is a carburetor version. Yeah, the F5 is much better. Oh I heard. my god. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't opened a carburetor before, to be honest. That's one of the things I'm trying to get around. I go to a shop and say, but they don't want to do. You don't do. <laughs> yeah, because they don't. Carburetors very rare sensitive. these days. Maybe I should go read up some YouTube video and do it myself. Mm -hmm. you know, what's the worst thing to do? Is two thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, that's the uh, that's the, uh, the things I like to do most of the maintenance myself, other than some major stuff. Chain and sprockets are done last month. The parts also very expensive, very rare to find in Singapore. It was urgent because my chain was clicking, so I really uh, cashed out on that one. I put a lot of money <laughs> out. And the uh, very a very interesting thing of this bike mm -hmm. is that it's height for class two B. It's I think it's one of the most highest riding yes. bike. Then it's so simple. The displays are everything that there. But one thing that's severely lacking is there is no fuel gauge. Oh, so yes. back to the time when I owned a Phantom, you shake it and you feel it. Yeah. <laughs> or I haven't rode to the extent where it's splatter. Thankfully, the tank is huge. Mm. But I use uh, I use math, so I I got the mileage. Every time I pump fuel, I reset. So about 400 already. Okay, time to go. Mm -hmm. Or top up one two liters, you know, just in case. Then go up north. <laughs> then it's a bang for about. You feel the entire tank well outside and you get a easier, cheaper than public transport mm. in Singapore. Yeah, so that's uh, one of the ma major uh, major things I do on this bike. Alright, so being 125cc. <laughs> yes, 125cc. I'm sure you, you know, you don't feel boring, man. Like, it's such a big bike, heavy some more. Yes. And the engine's so small. Uh. Mm -hmm. How you handle the performance and all that? Well, first of all, you got to really understand the 125cc architecture. This is a 125, but it's a V-twin. Mm -hmm. So the revs can go up very high. Mm. You can actually rev it to about 11,000, 12,000 RPM without the rev limiter kick in. Okay. And that's where you basically ride the bike to the limit to perform near to its baseline of its Class 2B brothers. For mm. example, uh, you have to really be very sensitive about the throttle mm -hmm. and the clutch. So when you release the clutch and throttle, you have to change at the correct time. You really have to feel the bike. It's one of those bikes that you've got to feel it and you've got to really get in the zone. Uh -huh. And there's a saying that it's more fun to ride a small bike fast or slow bike fast than a fast bike actually fast. Because it's more like a, a hit when you get all the points correctly and you, well, you do a perfect acceleration off the line. That is uh, one of the things that brings me the little pleasures in life. <laughs> you really, you know it's a one to five. The thing that really, uh, when you talk about performance, when you talk about touring, you see the boxes more. I can fully load the thing and it will run 95 km cruise easily. 120, 120, 130 maybe downhill. Yes. Max, how, how fast can you, have you rode before? Max, how fast I rode before when I was uh, go, coming back from Malacca, mm -hmm. going downhill, I think. Was it downhill? Yeah, it should be downhill. I can push up to about 120, 130. Okay. But this is not a cruising speed. Mm -hmm. It will not shake. The bike is super heavy. It's about so, 170. So even heavy. At, uh, at that speed, Stable. Uh, it's stable. Yeah. The vibration? No vibration. The engine is small. So and it's also V twin. It auto corrects. Oh, it's yeah, uh, yeah. and really I'm quite surprised. It would be nice if you have a two fifty or three hundred yeah. series. The Vardero, this is the little brother. This is the little Vardero. There's the big Vardero is one thousand XL. Right. There's one in Singapore, it's I'm very itchy. I mm -hmm. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> You're considering it. Yeah, I'm considering it, but it doesn't reach 
anywhere as the fuel consumption or the practicality. You buy a touring bike, you use it for day to day, you are stabbing yourself in the foot. Yeah, yeah, of course. More, yeah. So, so unless you are talking about your your bikes are your 750, or the Legends in fuel efficiency, and maybe the 400X. So uh, talking about performance, that's uh, what you get. Acceleration is horrible, really. Like, you really have to get it right. If not, you see cars catching up <laughs> from the start line. Cars catching up, you look behind, oh no. Or you shift wrongly, or you upshift before you reach about 4K. There's, you literally can't feel the gear engage. Mm. <laughs> so, so five speed or six? It's so a five speed. Five speed? Yes. Considering that you, even if you look at the meter, it red lines at 12,000 RPM, you know? Yes. My bike red lines at like 9,000 RPM. They're really making the little engine work as hard as possible. Yeah. Also, one thing about it is, I've been reading up on the Vario because uh, of this interview. Mm -hmm. The engine seems to be detuned for mm. the UK law. Uh. So, there are several uh, things, physical blockers inside the system that is keeping the uh, horsepower down, such as intake bunk. There's a little rubber bunk mm -hmm. that forces the air through a smaller passage. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I've seen people bore the Vardero to slightly much bigger. There's a lot. There's a lot of metal inside there. When you when you open up the the case, you can see it's quite big. When you open up. You have a little bottle cap that is the piston. <laughs> so there's a lot of room to clean out in case you have a, you have to reboil your, your cylinders. How oh, I wish this bike is a 200 cc queen, you know? It will definitely perform so much better. There's the 200X, but that's a Hornet with a new skin. CB190X with a new skin. Yes. You, 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 don't, have, you don't have this kind of uh, designs anymore. It's a different design philosophy belonging to older time. Now everything is built to efficiency, to market demand. And then considering that this bike has more curves. Oh yeah, the curves. My the god, curves. you see it's so round and curvy. Yeah, yeah. It's really dated actually. Yeah. <laughs> For its time, it's, it's attractive. La, but nowadays, it's, uh, you can see it's dated. La. Today's bike, it's all, you know, more sharp, angular lines compared to the, the bikes of the previous time. You know, it's more curvy, right? Mm. But then again, if you look at bike designs over the years, you know, the, the trend is a cycle. This era will be more curvy, then the next era will be sharp. And then yep, it, it is back, a cycle. Curves, curves comes back and then the sharp comes back. <laughs> like what may look outdated today, <laughs> yeah. will be will come back as a fashionable item tomorrow. See, now, now this retro-rhythm is coming back. Yeah, yeah retro is racers, yeah, true. You mentioned that this bike you do yourself because those are the workshops don't touch, is it? They don't have to touch. There's only a few. Mm -hmm. uh, those, there's a few, there's, there's one I had Pui Panjang. Mm -hmm. he, he managed to rebuild my entire wiring. Previously, I had some issues with the wiring mm -hmm. because the wire is old, they crumble and they touch mm -hmm. and they, they burnt out the wiring harness. So he managed to rebuild my wiring harness for me. Yeah, obviously, I had to provide him the wiring diagram. The thing about this bike is in the UK, there's a lot of people doing it. Yes. So there's this thing called the Haynes Manual. It's basically the Bible or the Quran for the bikes. Mm -hmm. The ex external manual. Inside the manual, there's all the servicing steps, all the parts to, for, to buy. For all the bikes available in Depending the on what Haynes covers, yes. Oh, uh, so so I, I got my hands on that manual, I print out the pages, the uncle please follow the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Don't destroy the bike. If the bike gone, I have to scrap it already. I have no way to fix it anymore. <laughs> so other than the wiring harness, uh, oh. most of the uh, servicing I've done myself. There were a few times the bike got uh, grounded mm -hmm. because it was oversight, maintenance oversight. When you buy an old bike, the first few things that you must change is your throttle cable, your clutch cable, and try to change your brake fluid and try to pump out the air on your brakes. These mm -hmm. things, I was too excited when I got the Varadero. I, I, took, I took it to Malacca, you know, like the first two weeks I went to go, go Malacca. <laughs> just straight out from the shop, the guy say he changed the oil. I say, okay, you changed the oil, I go to Malacca. <laughs> I, I drove the bike up and down, no problem. Then the problems start coming. Uh. Mm -hmm. This one day I was turning into a HDB block, puck. Why the gear cannot change? Oh, <laughs> ah, so clutch cable snap. Uh. Yeah, clutch cable snap, the throttle cable snap. Mm. The throttle cable snap some other time. Lucky, I also always happen when I turn into the HDB <laughs> carpool. So that's a, uh, it's, a, it's pure luck. Yeah. So these are the things that you got to look out for. But for the, this age of the bikes, I believe they are built to last. Like, mm -hmm. There's a very interesting, the swing arm mm. belongs to a 750, I think. Oh, really? oh, yeah, oh, yeah. it's very big and it shares some of the uh, chain with the Super 4. So they borrow the parts here and there. You know, like, the, like now Ferrari, they take Ford parts, like correct, correct. blinkers, they use Ford parts. So Honda did this something to, to this is the Vario to appeal to 
the new dual sport customers because people are moving on at that age people are going to more uh, off-road riding mm -hmm. so they wanted something to cater to the the younger riders and also it's built big because they are more big now we're a bit taller mm -hmm. so it gives me a very very nice stance on the road yeah. you, you can sit on the bike for five hours four hours no pains at all. You are sitting in a near vertical position. Yeah, so you, you know, you have the height yeah. for him to be tiptoeing. <laughs> of course, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yeah, you just don't put your leg down. <laughs> <laughs> other, other than that, the, uh, putting the bikes on the main stand is it's a skill. You have to learn it. Yeah, it's very really heavy. I'm very surprised. I tried this now. Yeah. Okay, I have I trouble <laughs> with my own bike NC750 putting on main stand. I'm shocked. Lemah. No, uh, not lemah. <laughs> <laughs> it's shocked. I can even lift up the 125cc whatever it is. This is your your bike is about how much? The 750 is about 200 plus. 200 plus, correct. This is yeah. this wet. Because I just pump fuel, so yeah. <laughs> so it's about 180, 170 kg. Maybe the shock lower. I don't know. Maybe over time it's sack. Maybe. <laughs> Lex, I can see that you know you have do some cosmetic upgrades to the bike. So far, how what have you done and uh, how much have you spent altogether? Regarding the cosmetic upgrades, most of this what you see is mm -hmm. stock, but I will highlight the few that I've done. Uh -huh. The prices of the cosmetic parts I also have uh, taken note because I wanted to add into the cost of the bike when I purchased mm -hmm. it. The most important upgrade will be the lights. The Varadero uses some OS halogen bulb lights. Uh -huh. You don't even know it's on at night. Oh, so you cannot see in front. It was my first trip to Malacca, thanks to my friend that rides a Harley. Mm -hmm. He has an array of lights. So he was my headlight throughout the entire trip. <laughs> oh, headlight. So that got me thinking, what happens is if I'm stuck on B-roads at night? So I decided to install LED fog lamps. These uh, cost me about $50, $60. I wired it myself. You have to wire it directly to the battery. Wow. This helped me increase my visibility mm -hmm. at night. Uh, I don't use them much in Singapore unless it rains. That's the law, I believe. But that is the upgrades that I did. The rest, what you see, so let's start on the rear. You have the uh, rear pannier. Pannier rack is custom made. Oh. I just realized it was custom made. Oh, there was wow. no market product on this because on the Vara forums, they were looking at it. They were like, where, the, where does this, uh, this rack come from? It was custom made on some metal fabricators. So the, you can see the bottom part yeah, is yeah. all fabricated. Okay. Because I see the Cisco. They last time also used the Vara Dero as their police bike. Uh -huh. So I think maybe the maybe owner... They quote from the, from the... Maybe the owner can quote from, from them. Uh. Could, could be, be yeah. Or maybe but, uh, the, the owner sent the same old shop to the Cisco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they used for Cisco last time? Last time, oh, yeah. correct. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, okay, Cisco, that's something I know. I think now still have, la, but very few I see. The rest is the uh, the side boxes. Mm -hmm. I use. Mm -hmm. I don't put the side boxes on because it's tough to fit into some uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. So I just keep my main box on. One of my most important upgrades to any bike, right, is yeah. the cover of the uh, seat. This, uh, <laughs> this mesh cover, uh -huh. it is thick, it is breathable. So when you ride long distance yeah. or when it rains, mm -hmm. you don't get your pants totally soaked. This is the best upgrade, the most bang for buck upgrade I would recommend. Yeah. Yeah. Cats also uh, scratch it. So. Cats will get hooked on the, I saw a cat try to climb my bike before. <laughs> its claws got hooked. Mm. Then it was down there struggling. <laughs> struggling. So it's more like an anti-cat deterrent also. Yeah. Only one thing the problem is when you park under trees, the little stuff get into the thing uh, and yeah, to yeah, take yeah, it off yeah, and yeah. shake it off. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, <laughs> the next thing is the tank bra. Wow, this changes the outlook of the Varadero entirely. The Varadero, I believe this one was black silver. This uh, came with the bike. I think it cost about, it's quite, quite expensive, the tank brass, about two three hundred dollars I was lucky to have it already attached to the bike. Then it was painted matte by the previous owner according to the shop. He wanted a more uniform look because the Vara had a two-tone look uh -huh. that was quite uh, not uniform. Then uh, what else did I do to the bike? Crash bar? Ah, the, the, the crash bar was included in the bike. Oh. After my Italian scooter dropping left and dropping right and breaking <laughs> the lights, I think I needed some uh, help. Uh, so, so I looked out for crash bars, ah. uh, bikes with crash bars. So you bought it, it already has... Uh, yeah, it already has install, crash bar right? installed. Because mm -hmm. the original one didn't have yeah. crash bar. Yeah, right? that's also what they call the mud plate, the mm. skid plate below. Skid plate, uh. Yeah, it is very important. You can see it's, it's scratched up a lot. Because something about the Vara's rear mud guard, it, it will kick up rocks. You can see the center of mine is all scratched up already, which mm -hmm. I don't care. I, you know, it's supposed to be a wear and tear component anyway. <laughs> it, look, it looks rugged. <laughs> Yeah, other than that, it is more or less bone stock. Mm -hmm. Keep the bikes bone stock, you're going to have problems to worry about. I think you earlier mentioned your meter died already. Yeah? The meter is also an accessory, uh -huh. aesthetic accessory. Uh -huh. I could live without it. No <laughs> way this bike can go above the speed limit. Mm -hmm. But when you ride a bike uh, and something is not right with the bike, mm -hmm. and you know something is not right, it will bug you and you can't sleep. Uh. 
for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, my, meter, my meter was quite interesting because the, only the speedometer died. The yeah. tachometer was fine, the rest of the meters, the temperature gauge. The, the speedometer was my fuel gauge because the mileage was my what I used to measure my, how much fuel I have in the tank left. <laughs> so suddenly I have no clue my range left. It really bugged at me. So, so I brought it to, I think, Bunsu or something, one of the shops. I say, no matter what happens, just fix it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just fix it. They quoted me uh, quite, how expensive, $600? $600 for, yeah, the, for the meter and the speedo cable. This one uses, uh, you know, normally speedo yeah. is engine, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. This speedo goes with the front wheel. Uh -huh. And it's not your, you know, your CB400 has the mechanical one that mm -hmm. spins. Yeah. This one is electronic for some reason. <laughs> so, so I had no way to troubleshoot. So I, I changed the whole thing. Uh, 600 bucks. Okay, uh, fine. Oh. It gives me time to sleep. Uh. And, and now I can sleep peacefully <laughs> without worrying about the bike. So far, so good. It's been a very trustworthy bike, given it's 20 years of age. Mm, would never trade it for another 125, because I think it's the only thing in this class that looks like that. Might keep it as a side bike when I move along. Here's hoping I know it will probably stabilize in the years, in the, the months to come. All these kiasu people, uh, what, they, they are hoping to bang for another like 5,000 COE, then they go take the bike shop. I almost went down, no, straight away put cash for the 400 XA. I was thinking, no, no, no. <laughs> you, you feed the bike shop, the, the yeah. bike shop will use the, the yeah. thing to buy. From the way you you describe your bike, the way, you know, uh, you, I don't have to ask a lot of questions. You basically has explained everything that I wanted to ask. Yes, you know? I really like this guy a lot. It's <laughs> no, one of the memorable bikes. Considering that you already own this bike for like one and a half years, yep. right? But the, the, the knowledge you got from this, reading up, and then you do your own work, you work on your bike on your own, you know, uh, I can say you really love this bike so much, and also it gives me a clue that, uh, are you from engineering? Yeah, mechanical engineering, uh, yeah. I give away. Uh, <laughs> the way he explained already, I know, this guy must be an engineering person. You know? If you're engineering your bike spoil, you know, it dub <laughs> double the hurt. You know? It's like, you can do something about it, you can understand it. Mm -hmm. If I study something else, probably, Workshop only, right? right? <laughs> sure, this one, it, it becomes your pride, you know. <laughs> the bike becomes a thing of your pride, you know. Like, mm. you cannot service your own bike. Yeah, you can't doubt your own abilities. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I search for what, ah? Uh? My bike spoil, eh? I don't know what's wrong yeah, with it. For what you get the degree, eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, so that, that is something that I cannot like, cannot, because of my, uh, my, uh, my studies. Uh -huh. And also, the bike plays a huge part in my life. It mm -hmm. brings me here and there, it brings me to work, it brings me around Singapore. Mm -hmm. So, I, it should be kept in a tip-top condition, no expense spent or this type yeah, of thing. True. If your bike is the, the, your livelihood, right? Mm -hmm. Then it is uh, imperative that you make sure that this bike is working. Right? That's right. Unless you have another, at least if you have extra, extra an extra bike. bike. Yeah. And you know, a, a side bike, you know, you can at least, if this, this baby breaks down, you can you go, still can go walk around, you know, you, need, you still can move around. Mm -hmm. So in your one and a half years, is it? Yep. For the ship, what's your best memory so far with the Vardero 125? The best memories was uh, when I got it, I told you about two weeks, I went to Malacca with my friend. My friend rides a Harley, you know, Harley okay. 1600cc. Uh, yes. How does it keep up? <laughs> How does it keep up? It, it barely keeps up. My guy, my guy was uh, keeping it at about 100km for me. <laughs> He's a nice guy. <laughs> so he was keeping a 100 can. The Vara was balls to the walls, full throttle, <laughs> all the way. I was expecting it to you know, overheat or something. Yeah. Nah, nothing. It just rode all the way. It was in the evening, at night, raining. Mm -hmm. All the worst conditions you can possibly think of. And it's just, it, this little thing just putters on. We, we stopped at Gilang Pata for, for a few and a break. Then we made uh, the way to, I think, Batu Pahat. And then all the way up to Malacca. Brought me there safely. Started up the next day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, always happen when you bring it there and then you stop start. Then so it was quite interesting because it's a little bike. You you know it's a little bike, uh -huh. and it still runs. You can keep up at like two, two B speeds. Uh, you would say ninety to hundred, about two two B speeds, and consistently it performs without fail. Mm. So that is uh, something that you got to really give it to the bike. Uh. That's that's why I, it's kind of endearing. Uh. Every time when I switch it on in the morning and it starts up, it's a win mm. every day. Given its age of uh, twenty years, yeah. Yeah. bikes these days they. After their uh, breaking period, they break down. Yes, correct. <laughs> and uh, the wants you to spend more money on it. So yeah. anyway, you mentioned that all the riders around you, especially veteran riders, uh, mm -hmm. they admire this bike. Then they stop by, <laughs> then they look at me, then they give me the nod. Then I was like, is it saying hi? or is it? Then they, some of them, they lift up their helmet and talk to me and say, this, this was my, uh, my dream bike. 
when I was uh, when I was your age. <laughs> I, I look at uncle, how old are you already? Uh, oh, I'm 50 plus. <laughs> then I was like, so uh, then, yeah, then he asked me, uh, still running? Uh, yeah, you can see it on the road, it's still available. Then at workshops also, when I bring the bike in for servicing, uh, they look at, they, you know, they bring their wives, they stare at it, they, they told me stories of this bike. It's legend because you see the, the rear seat, uh, mm -hmm. it's huge, you know. Yeah, correct. It's super big. Eh. You can put a pillion on comfortably. Mm -hmm. I, I look at him, hey, your wife, last time you lighter, right? Your wife and you, on 125 bike, you go to Penang on the Varadero. And he said, yeah, 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 no problem. Last time, just a pillion like that, go up, go to uh, Penang. And I was like, wow. These stories really built the, uh, the, the reputation of the Varadero, the legendary reputation. They call it, your bike legend, bro, your bike legend. I, I text to people, hey, can you got this part of the Varadero one to five? Or, wow, this bike is the legend. I'm confused. I buy the bike without knowing anything about the bike. I just like its looks. So far, are there any like club for the Varadero in Singapore? There was on a uh, hardware forums, but I don't know whether it's still, it's still alive or not. I didn't, obviously, I didn't make any sound there, but I know a few riders because we we joined the UK forums mm -hmm. where the Varadero is massive. Mm -hmm. for, we we know immediately when it's a Singapore bike. When they send, send a picture, you know that the Varadero is from Singapore. <laughs> there's, there's this, there's what, this what, bike. The, the, the telltale sign? sign is your, your I think it's the, <laughs> your <laughs> black license number plate, plate, your license plate, and also your, your big, big license plate, you know, they like to keep the numbers big and everything. And the condition on the bike is a bit rubber. Uh, it's always, the UK bikes, you don't know why, they look super pristine, you know. Uh -huh. Then the Singapore bike looks very worn and tested. Maybe it's the weather. <laughs> but when, UK also rain. Uh. Sorry, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe because of the hobbies culture over there. Oh, yeah. And then they keep inside the garage. Usually for UK, uh, motorbikes are a lifestyle. Oh, uh, yeah. Lifestyle thing. They usually use the right cars, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a side vehicle for them, mm -hmm. I see. So that's why it's more pristine over there. I reckon. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, the yeah. mileage is also very low. I'm going to uh, this one, see even down. I'll buy another engine. I'll buy a one to five engine and swap low mileage engine. <laughs> Don't even think about overhaul. You know, headache. Bought this, bought that. Put new engine inside. I checked it. eBay is about four hundred dollars. Wow. Four or five dollars, the yes. whole engine. <laughs> if you switch to uh, between engine of another bike also, I think can also. Uh. It, <laughs> but, but it's, again, it's quite a big engine space, mm. yes, I would but say. But then again, it's uh, air cool. Mm. No, it's water cool. Water cool. Water cool, water water cool. cool eh? Water oh, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see. <laughs> That's why it won't overheat. On YouTube, you can watch. There's a CB500. Inside, engine inside. 500, uh. I don't know, I, this sort of thing, uh, the, your brakes and everything not specced up for 500 <laughs> engine, you put inside, your tyre fly off. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. the brakes so small. Yeah. <laughs> but these are the people that really love the bike. Mm. You can tell, they, they really know what's the limiting factor of the bike. Mm. Singapore, don't play the law. Don't play the law to a certain extent. Try to uh, keep it as stock as possible, less problems also. A shame really, nothing yeah. bigger. The Varadero is uh, its predecessor is the VFR. You know your VFR. Oh, that was also quite old, eh? <laughs> yeah. Then the VFR also Mati. Uh -huh. Now is the Africa Twin. You see the designs. They instead of spreading out, they mm -hmm. sort of keep the prominent models only. Yeah. Uh, so so the uh, there's less variety these days. It's, yeah, quite true lah. The models that is the workhorse of the 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 brand eh? yep. They try to update its version. Yep. So just like the Super Four lah. It's a workhorse of the Honda. But unfortunately, Honda will not be producing any. Yeah, yeah they stop the emissions regulations ah. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> a true GDM sir. Yeah. <laughs> true JDM, yes. True JDM bike. Uh. Oh, come on, uh. BS uh. It's a full of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens. Also, one interesting fact about this bike, uh, the engine is made in Brazil or South America. You can actually see the engine plate. Oh. This is not a... I don't think any part of it is made in Japan. To me. <laughs> it's a very weird time for Japan when they, you know, they yeah. push their manufacturing the outsource. outsource. Uh, yeah, they started with Brazil and they get more confident with Thailand, now, now China. Uh, that worked in the opposite way for them. But, but this, this engine is quite hardy. It's a shared engine. It belongs to another 125. If you heard of the 125 Shadow, okay, Honda yeah. Shadow, it's a cruiser, I think. Cruiser, yeah, okay. But Singapore, you can buy the Phantom. Why will you buy the Shadow? Yes. But so when I source for parts, it's Shadow or the Vardero parts. Mm -hmm. they, sh they share the same engine. Put a cruiser engine into a Venture Touring. Mm -hmm. Kind of sound like Harley. Eh? <laughs> anyway, this bike has always been a UK kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Lex, I have to say, I really appreciate you sharing this story about your bike. Uh. We all know Varadero is a legend, mm -hmm. but now we know why it's a legend. 
I always thought that this bike is just another touring bike, you know. But when you share your experience, your knowledge, you know, it makes the bike an iconic I bike. Today I never speak a lot. Lah. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, you only speak so, so much. Uh, the only question we are, want to ask, uh, you already answer. Yep. <laughs> so now our turn to speak. Lah. So once again, Lex, thank you so much thank you. for yeah. sharing your experience you. with the Varadero 125. I, I'm Love just interesting facts. Interesting yeah. facts about his history mm-hmm. and heritage about this bike. But sadly, this continued. Oh, this continued. Yeah. And yep. also in Singapore's case, we have to. Yep. By by the vehicle control laws. La. Not only vehicle control law, environmental control laws. Oh, so this thing doesn't have, uh, what is that, the catalytic converter. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> no way it will be no way, continued uh, again. Yeah, less classic plate. La. So, any riders want to review that part you ask, you can touch with me um, at our social media pages uh, below. Uh, note that we're only shooting in one location right now, which is Johor Bahru. Yes, our studio, new. Studio, <laughs> nice place. Studio. It's a house, lah. So welcome, Lex. First, first rider place. to be reviewing your bike with us here in the new space, huh? Come review and top up. <laughs> Don't forget to check out our sponsors, Cardo. We have been using the Cardo Pack Talk Neo for quite some time now, and it really helped us on our communication. And also, when you're riding, uh, you're boring. Uh, listen song, use Cardo, lah. And yeah, that's it for the vlog, and we will see you guys in the next one.